On this week's episode of the Modern Dealer Podcast, David and I go live for the very first time. And we're going to be talking about the Tampa Bay Super Bowl and Super Bowl commercials online retailing. All that and more on the first live episode of the Modern Dealer Podcast. Welcome in to the first live episode of the Modern Dealer Podcast. My name is David Farmer with Intice. With me remotely is David Bertoncini. How you doing, David? I'm excellent, Mr. Farmer. How are you? Look at you, man. <laughs> we are doing we're, good. We're doing this live, which we've never done before, and it's it's it has a different feeling to it already. And, and the way you put this together, um, just looking at the equipment, you look like a DJ. You got so much equipment around you. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so let's just show it off a little bit. So first of all, I'm going to go from, uh, from us to me, a little, uh, uh, camera shot there. I can do a little overhead. I got this going on here. Got my side view. Here's the little DJ. Look at that thing. Dude. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Now, I can sw switch it back over here and then uh, get us uh, both back together. Welcome in to MDP Live. Very exciting. Very exciting, man. Live kicking it off. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be back because it's been a long time since we've, uh, we've uh, kicked off the Modern Dealer Podcast. But Modern Dealer Podcast Live, that's even more energy right there. So It's a whole, it's a whole we different a mistake, deal. If we make a mistake, it's like, whoops, <laughs> fuck it, we're going Oops. forward. <laughs> Sorry yeah, about that. Be yeah, no, it'll be it'll be very interesting to see uh, to see what happens here. So I'm I'm super excited about making this live, and so let's just do a quick recap uh, for anybody that might be watching. So we started, we kicked off the Modern Dealer Podcast July fourth week, uh, 2019. We ran it through uh, 52 episodes plus a couple of special episodes to the middle of 2020. So we were kind of knee deep in the. Uh, the pandemic, uh, maybe a month or two into, you know, everything, uh, everything that was changing. And that's when we decided, let's just go ahead and put a pause on it because everything we were talking about was pandemic, 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 pandemic. It was like online retailing, Carvana, digital retailing, what's going on? Uh, let's get employees back to the dealership. So we decided to take a break and we're coming back six, eight months later. It is February. Uh, what is it? February 4th today. 2021. Yep. 2021. February 4th. Yep. yep. So, so I'm on their podcast and get catching everybody up uh, live episode. And so we've got some pretty exciting things happening here in Tampa Bay. Uh, we're lucky enough to be in Tampa Bay. You're actually just right across the bay in, uh, in St. Pete, right? Downtown St. Pete. So, you know, speaking of Tampa Bay, it's been since we took off from the, 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 the podcast, uh, the Rays, um, well, the Rays went to the World Series. Um, you know, the Lightning yep. won the Stanley Cup, and the Rays actually play right behind me. They are literally um, half a mile away from the stadium, downtown St. Pete here. And then this week we've got the Bucks in the Super Bowl. You know, in the host, we have the host town for the first time in history is the is is actually in playing in the Super Bowl. Exciting, and I remember when and during that time frame, of course, you know when we were doing the. The podcast it was right when the pandemic started is when we found out tom brady was coming to tampa mm -hmm. and when i saw that then i said okay and the super bowl's in tampa tom brady's coming to tampa i said watch watch the bucks go to the super bowl with brady and what could happen i wish i wish i would have called it out like in yeah the, in the uh video format. nostradamus so style Exactly. I could have went back to like, okay, in March 27th, I said, this, I said it was going to happen <laughs> and here it happens. Yep. So they're going to win it too. So I'll, at least I'm going to say they're going to win it. So I can at least call that out because uh, never will they have an opportunity like this again. I think the, the energy will be so high. Nobody would want to give up, but the energy will be high. Even if you're not a football fan, the energy is high because those people that love the commercials, the football commercials, that's where it comes in at. And I think it's one of our topics here today and, and the Modern Dealer Podcast Live is we're talking about one of these these epic Super Bowl commercials that people spend millions of dollars on. Well, there's a new player in town on these Super Bowl commercials. I was I watched a special today that the traditional advertisers, Budweiser, not advertising. Um, who else was? Uh, there's a couple other big brands that are not advertising. Ford's not advertising. 
Typically, brands that are advertising their Super Bowl, they backed off and they allowed some smaller advertisers to step up. And one of those advertisers is our main topic today. Which is yeah, be so absolutely. Uh, so a couple boys. things real quick. You know, so Tom Brady uh, came to Tampa. Um, now, we, uh, me and my wife, we used to live on Davis Island. That's where Tom Brady is living now. He's living, I think, in Derek, uh, not I think, I know he's living in Derek Jeter's house. I don't know if he bought it or if he's mm-hmm. renting it. But that was just right around the corner from where we were living uh, on Davis Island. Great area, Tampa, so excited. I know everybody on Davis Island is super excited that their neighbor uh, came to town um, so a lot of exciting things uh, happening. You know, one of the things I did find out uh, this week is that this, of course, is not considered a home game. So for the Tampa Bay Bucks, if you're familiar with uh, the stadium, we got the big ship. And then every time that uh, the Bucks would be playing at home, they'd be getting a touchdown. They would uh, blow off the cannons. Um, so this time, because it's not a home game, no cannon fire. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did know that, but they are getting the uh, – when they introduce the Bucks, each player gets a, a shot off the cannon. So oh, that's will good. Be a good. good. Yeah, so when they introduce the starting uh, you know, offense and defense, uh, all the starting players will get the cannon shot off as they are being introduced. So that will be like the only home field advantage. And, of course, we do, uh, we do other things like when they get down to the red zone, the 20-yard line. And less, you know, we raise the flags. That's one of the Tampa slogans is raise the flags. But can't do yeah. that because there'll be Super Bowl flags all over the stadium. But I was there on Sunday, this past Sunday, just checking out kind of what's happening and so much energy in, in the Tampa Bay area. It's crazy with uh, all the um, NFL experiences that's, that's downtown, all the visitors that we have. Uh, I was at the NFL experience and saw that there was nothing but Tampa Bay fans there. And the Kansas City fans, I, I could count on one hand out of the probably 500 people that were out there outside socially distance, of course. But um, it was just just crazy how much energy is is focused on this and excitement. And it's, today is Thursday and the, the game is only uh, it's on yep, Sunday. Yep. So a couple it's, days uh, away. It's, yep. Exciting yeah, time for Tampa. I mean, away, Tampa man. really. Tampa is such a great place to live. I mean, so many great things that we have around here. Um, you know, I grew up in North Dakota, Minnesota. You know, I think it's, uh, sorry. You know, it's probably five <laughs> degrees uh, out there right now. Um, and, uh, you know, today it's a little cold today, but it's going to be 70 something for the game. Um Anyway, such great things. But one of the things that you did bring up just a little bit ago, David, is what our main topic is. So what we want to talk about today is um, online retailers, how uh, you know they are providing value to consumers and why online customers are purchasing vehicles from online only retailers, but specifically how they are marketing to customers. And that's one of the things that we found uh uh, today for kind of to kick off our main topic, and that is a Vroom commercial. Um, and I've seen it, and it one of the things that really bothers me about it is it really paints the automotive industry very negatively. And I think it is what it does is it paints the entire industry in a very bad light. So. In my opinion, you know, when you're looking at uh, advertising or processes, there's really a line and you're either going to be on the positive side of process and advertising or you're going to be on a negative side of processes or advertising. There's no question that this uh, TV spot that uh, a Vroom is running is very negative. It paints automotive industry in a very negative light. And actually, I think I can share it real quick. Let's see, let's see if I can't find that. Um, and as we're doing that... Uh, tell me a little bit also while I get this pulled up, uh, David, is you, you, you said you did some research on some, uh, some other, uh, TV spots, commercials. Do you see anything else out there that was, uh, that was interesting or good, or is it going to be kind of exciting from an advertising standpoint? Oop, hold on. Do I gotcha? Hold on. I don't know. I don't know if I lost your audio. See, this is what happens when we're live. I don't know if I got your audio here. So a little technical difficulty. Um, I can't hear you. Guest has muted themselves. So you somehow muted yourself here.
I can't hear you now. So uh, you might have to log off and log back in if you want to try that. Uh, let me see. Solo Let's try that. There you go. There you go. I don't know what you did, there but you go. got okay. it. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I've hit a done button. So. Okay, cool. I think it was... All right. <laughs> All right. Done. Anyway. I love it. So. <laughs> Live TV, right? Live TV. So do me a favor, David. Tell, tell, uh, tell our, uh, our listeners today a little bit about what you researched on some other uh, TV spots as I pull up uh, this one for Vroom. Okay. So what I found was um, there was a, there was a previous for the, of the Super Bowl commercials. And one of the cool things is I already seen in one of my own apps on the Uber Eats app um wayne's world is back and when i ordered uber eats last night um it was like wayne's world was part of my ordering process which was kind of funny all the little icons and everything was all wayne's world and uh, yeah Dana, that's awesome uh yeah 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 you, you know you had the, the guys from wayne's world there dana and carby and um what's his name there the, mike myers yeah, uh, mike myers yes both yep. of them were on my phone when i was ordering but uh what i noticed and we're going to see on this vroom commercial is you're saying there could be a positive twist or a negative twist and every advertiser all the ads out of the 16 that i saw they're all positive except vroom and it was like they had celebrities like doritos has got matthew mcconaughey um m&m's our band uh dan levy from schitt's creek you know david 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 yep, yep. um he's on an <laughs> m&m's commercial Coors, uh bud light uh bud light's got post malone uh, Chipotle. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of positive advertisements out there. Pretty much a lot, a lot of the big advertisers, Hellman's, they got Amy Schumer, Mountain Dew's got John Cena. Um, let's see here. You know, Pring, uh, Frito-Lay's got a pretty cool one with a bunch of uh, old NFL players. They even got Jason Alexander from from um, Seinfeld for the Tide commercial. And like, yeah, I saw that one. That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Cheetos commercial was Shaggy and um, – uh, Ashton Kusher and uh, Malia, that that was like a, a pretty good one, but all of them are positive and they have these celebrities. What they've done with the Vroom thing, no celebrities. The negativity is they you know they they demonize yeah. a salesperson. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and really, what we can do is. So just to make sure that we don't get kicked off YouTube for playing uh, copyrighted material, I can't play the audio, or if I do play the audio, we have to talk over it. So I'm going to go ahead and play it right now, and uh, you're going to be able to see that uh, you're gonna buy the commercial the car, here it shows a, a finance manager if walking into a customer, customer saying, wife, can I just please go home? You, you can leave any time. Uh, yeah. And, you know, okay. it really makes it look at it. It's torturing the guy. And then he says, right. go to oh, a dealership I can again. just buy a car from okay. Vroom, Vroom, and they'll just okay, deliver well. to me. That was easy. Go to Vroom now, buy sure, a car and we'll deliver there, there's definitely free. some uh, benefits to um, purchasing a vehicle online versus uh, purchasing a vehicle directly from a dealership. But to, to really paint uh, automotive uh, any automotive dealership, because they're really painting an entire industry um, uh, as a negative experience. And, you know, being somebody that is super passionate about automotive retail, so much so that we made a goddamn live podcast about it, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's an industry it's, that supports so many people. Yep. And, and it's and it's crazy, as I said, out of all those different ad advertising agencies that uh, have a 30 second spot. They spent millions of dollars. Vroom went after the automotive industry like that to demonize it. They, they have like, you know, they are selling their experience. I get it. And yeah. you want to, you know, um, it's just like, it, but you don't want to make ad, yourself you know? look better by making an entire industry look like shit. I think that's really the, right. the part that, that, uh, annoys me the most is um, that you don't have to make yourself uh, look better by making somebody else look bad. And I don't want to take the, the whole episode um, and uh, to, to just make it a, 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 a shit show about their advertising. What I really wanted to talk about today, or kind of our main topic, is you know what is happening in automotive retail uh, right now. And there's really some, some uh, a, lot, a lot of movement over the last... 
10 years to automotive online retailing, uh, you know, the mobile device, how people are interacting with uh, mobile, how we're utilizing the internet has really changed the industry. And we said we have some giant players, some really big players uh, that are in the automotive industry that weren't here 10 years ago. You know, I think mm-hmm. um, you, you look at a company like Carvana. They've been around since 2013. A company like Vroom, I think they first started in 2014. Um, and then uh, some of these other uh, companies. Uh, but one of the things that I thought was really interesting is I did grab uh, the market cap for some of these companies. Um, and it really is just absolutely amazing when you think about it. Uh, so um, Carvana, for example, has a market capitalization of $48.41 billion. Now, to put that in, um, to put that in, uh, in scope, Ford has a market capitalization or what the value of the entire company is of $45 billion. So Carvana actually has a higher valuation than uh, what Ford does. Uh, pretty amazing when you think about some of these companies that have just recently gone public. Uh, pretty crazy. I know how it happened too. So the reason why you know uh, Carvana looks so good is because all the guys on Reddit said, Carvana, Let's get behind Carvana. Let's start buying Carvana stock. <laughs> it kind of is that way, right? We had some crazy right. shit happening just last week with uh, GameStop. They had that uh, that Reddit, Reddit or subreddit, and they, they were trying to, you know, go against uh, big money, uh, Wall funds. Street he- hedge funds, um, uh, uh, shorting the company. Pretty funny. Pretty funny. Crazy yeah. shit that we're living through in 2020, and it's only what uh, uh, 35 days in. To 2021, yeah, it's, yeah, 2021, it's like 2020 yeah. part part two, I guess, right? Because it's yeah. it's it, it, it came out when we thought it was all over. It came out even crazier on January 6th, and then you know just so much. Just uh, I mean, it feels like it's settling down a little bit. But with that Reddit thing, that was actually pretty fun. It was like a stab to the hedge fund guys. Yeah. Now before uh, we get to going, me, I, I found it entertaining. Yeah. Before we go yeah. any further, what we we do have to know is what are we drinking today? Oh man, I am. Uh, uh, so I'm actually on uh, water today, and the reason okay. why is uh, no coffee. Th- my doctor, yeah, my doctor said blood pressure is too high, so I have to uh, slack off. I'm only allowed one cup a day. So wow! That, no so more, it's the it's the caffeine. No more pre- said t- still- well, caffeine doesn't help, but I mean pre workout and <laughs> stuff like that. That doesn't doesn't help me at all. So they said, hey, you got to lay off all this stuff, and actually. Uh, my doctor's appointment is coming up here in a little bit. So <laughs> okay, you got to get rolling. Well, yeah, so really today what we wanted to do is um, in order to make the Modern Dealer Podcast live work, there's really a, a lot of things that have to work together. And it, it's taken me quite a few months to kind of build up to be able to do what we're doing right now. And if you really think about it, it is pretty fucking amazing that that, is. that we can, as just a part-time deal with – you know, a few thousand dollars total worth of equipment uh, to be able to do a live broadcast uh, on the internet. We got our uh, lower third going right there, and having the ability to to, to pop around and bring in guests uh, really is absolutely amazing. And you know, from a from a technology guy, this is uh, you know something that you know, super fun for me to do as like a hobby, right? I mean, I got uh, my hands full uh, doing what I'm doing with uh, Entice and what we do from a services and a technology standpoint. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of get away from uh, the Modern the Podcast the way that it was is it just took so much time and kind of as a hobby, um, it was kind of a, a almost too much time uh, dedicated to it. But this, now that it's all set up, all we have to do is just uh, get dialed in. It doesn't matter. Turn it on and go. (laughs) You're using your phone. I got a camera set up over here and and my setup, but it's 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 a lot of fun. That's for sure. Well, I do have to say I did upgrade to the new iPhone 12 Max. um, And uh, so that's that's maybe some of the the good quality on the front camera. I've got the dual front cameras, but the back camera, that thing's pretty strong. Uh, Mm -hmm. It it takes some amazing stuff. But um, anyways, in the. uh, Oh, so so actually there there is an announcement, I think was uh, last night 
um, uh, talking about Apple and automotive. Another piece of information uh, that's out there right now is uh, it looks like yeah. I don't know if this has uh, been app uh, if this has been um, verified or or not, but Apple is teaming up with Kia and Hyundai uh, to build mm-hmm. the Apple Car. Uh, so they have uh, Apple has a project Titan that they've been working on for quite some time, and I know that they've been talking to different manufacturers, uh, including uh, Volkswagen, Hyundai, Kia. I think they were in uh, talks with Toyota previously and really over the last a couple of years, but it looks like they finalized an agreement with Hyundai Kia to build the Project Titan car uh, based on uh, Apple's uh, specs for a an Apple smart car. You know, don't know what it's going to be yeah. like, if it's going to be, um, you know, if it's going to be like, like the, a, a Tesla uh, or if it's going to be something completely brand new. I saw a bunch of prototypes and videos of the Apple car and they've got all kinds of different ideas. So like you said, they just needed a manufacturer to, you know, partner with the manufacturer. You don't have to build anything. You just reconfigure the manufacturer's factory already and you can build your car there. So good, smart move on Apple's part. Yeah, save all absolutely. That. All save a billion dollars here, a billion dollars there. <laughs> yep. You know, so another, uh, so uh, we'll do one more segment of this episode of the Modern Dealer Podcast, and uh, a couple things I wanted to do is is uh, just uh, chat about a few questions. So, um, and the question that I had is, so based on the commercial, and uh, we're going to put a, a link to this commercial when we post this live uh, podcast to our channel. So if you're not watching this live, you will be able to uh, watch it uh, at a later date, and we'll, we will put that link in the bottom uh, for that that uh, 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 Vroom. Uh, but I, what the question is, how do you think that the Vroom commercial is affecting the perception of car buying? Um, and, and I think what it's doing is overall, including the experience the customer is going to have with any online retailers, is it's making it worse. It's not making it any better. It's cementing, it's cementing the pre-notion that, you know, our parents told us about the automotive industry. I mean, a, a generation told us like, you know, oh, don't trust car dealerships in a previous generation for them. So it's just cementing some uh, false ideas that were implanted into everybody's heads years ago about car dealerships. Oh, don't trust car dealerships, bad place to go. And with these commercials is just basically, you know, people are saying, Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, I knew they were that way. Look, even look at the commercial. That's exactly how they are. And so this, these, these commercials are just, you know, just giving it justification. Yeah. It's perpetuating negative stereotypes about the process of buying a car um, and I don't think that's a good thing for Vroom. I don't think it's a good thing for our industry. But obviously, because we're looking at some of these companies and they have valuation of forty million or forty-eight million dollars in Carvana's case or Vroom's case, it's uh, five point six seven billion dollar uh, evaluation, uh, and they're a profitable company. Um, but so I think what's happening is that. The reason that they're successful is because obviously they're selling cars. So for them to be able to continue to sell cars, they are creating a value proposition and customers are coming into the dealership um, and buying cars from them. So I guess the question is, do online retailers have a better value proposition to consumers than a traditional dealership? Uh, What do you think about that? I think do the online online retailers online retailers have a better value proposition to customers do you mean do do, it is the idea that a uh, being able to go to a website and buy a car online or from a like a telemarketer type of uh, concierge is that really a better value proposition to consumers and is that why they're buying cars from these online retailers I know what well, my yeah, thoughts are to, on that. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes to the untrained to to that market that for years they were told you know going to a dealership uh, guys they're gonna lie to you they're gonna treat you like shit this this and that and if they've had that experience 
yeah, it's 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 going to look like a better value. But realistically, at the end of the day, your dealership is the better value because they give them the opportunity that 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 used car that was sent to them. I mean, who knows? Yes, you may have a Carfax history, but oh, when the Carfax didn't mention that they were smoker, they had pets. And, you know, they, that these these things that you can't get out of the car and the, these smells and odors and these allergens that people have that people are sensitive to. You're not going to know that. You're not going to know how that car drives. Yes, you have seven days to return it. But at the end of the day, people still like to go and it's like it's like my, you know, when you go shopping, my wife, when she goes shopping, yeah, she may order some clothes online, but she'd rather go there, try on the clothes, see, you know, it's, it's a test drive. So to miss out on that test drive to maybe, okay, well, this car didn't really fit me right. I go to the next one, the next one. They may feel sending the car back is more of an inconvenience. So in the end of the day, yes, the, the brick and mortar dealer will have the better value proposition, but to the new consumer coming in for the first time to buy a car, the 20 something year old fresh out of college buying their first vehicle on their own, well, they may look at Vroom as a better opportunity to get a, to buy a used car. Now as new car dealers, we need to uh, put our, our, you know, market ourselves better that we are the better option because we have certified pre-owned vehicles uh, backed up by the manufacturer. You can, you know, maybe this pre-owned vehicle, you could get a new vehicle for practically the same money and they would not know that through the room or the Carvana buying experience. And you know, what's really interesting about that too, is that you think about where the uh, traditional brick and mortar dealerships have the opportunity to provide a better value proposition to consumers is in some of the real parts of the business side of automotive, right? So these are things that we know as being veterans from working in automotive dealerships and our, 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 our viewers is that, well, where do these used cars come from? Generally speaking, these used cars are going to be used by other people. So it's somebody that purchased a vehicle brand new, drove it, and then traded it in on a new vehicle or uh, got rid of it in a different way. Uh, and maybe that is they leased the vehicle and then they did a lease turn in um, or the other source that these online retailers have is the ability to purchase vehicles from rental cars. So really, that's a great value proposition or a story that I don't think many uh, dealerships are incorporating into uh, the way that they're advertising their dealership. Uh, so instead of maybe advertising price or um, you know some of these other larger hooks, you know, really explain to a customer that, the best used cars come from new car dealerships because we're getting the cream of the crop and we only take the cream of the crop and then we get rid of everything else. We send it to auction and that's where these other online retailers are buying vehicles are really they're buying our rejects or they're buying vehicles from rental car companies that may not have been uh, treated as nicely as, uh, you know, uh, mom and pop just driving to uh, the store on Sundays. You know what I mean? Drive it like you don't own it, right? When you rent a car, that's that's the slogan. It's like, you know, treat that thing like a rental car. <laughs> it's 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 the truth. You know, it's it's a, very much the truth. Yeah, you just don't care because you're just using it, right? Exactly. So when somebody buys that vehicle they're like i'm going to spend thirty thousand dollars on this uh foreigner that just so happened to be you know set, spent its first thirty thousand miles with enterprise well eh, and that's what vroom is selling to the people but people don't look at it that way they look at it as like oh they have really nice you know this only has thirty thousand miles on it and they all they see in the car facts that it was a rental car but they don't see all of the every person that rented it and beat the shit out of it, basically. And, and this is what you're left ever with. Congratulations, you're gonna buy this vehicle. Um, you know, yeah, and then and I was ahead. just gonna say, so let's say a customer does buy a vehicle from one of these online retailers and they have an issue with it. That's one of the things that I think that the brick and mortar stores have such a such a better uh, value proposition. It says, hey, if you have an issue with it, we just happen to have 
a state-of-the-art service facility right here that's just miles away from uh, you know where you live. So if you ever have any issues, problems, whatever, you have a, a person to bring it back to. You don't have to chat with somebody online. You don't have to try to call somebody in a call center to try to deal with a uh, you know with a with a mechanical issue. And you know, as many years as you spent uh, selling and managing used vehicle departments, and you know, same as me. I mean, that's half of your time as a used vehicle uh, manager is is handling customers after the purchase. Uh, so be able to have that as a value proposition to consumers, I think, is uh, extremely important. And that actually segues me, segues me into the last question that we'll address on the very first episode of the Modern Dealer Podcast Live, and that is, what can car dealers do to successfully market to customers that like online car buying. So for the customers that really have a, an appeal or uh, like the idea of online uh, uh, car retailers, you know, what can car dealers do to successfully market uh, to those customers? What do you think about that, David? Uh, you ever heard of a little company called uh, Entice? Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they yeah, have some so pretty powerful... Pretty powerful software there that would complete that buying process online. They can, you know, have a um, a hybrid version which the customer can start the entire deal online. They can, you know, go in and out of their deal at their leisure. They can, you know, find out what the value of their uh, what they're going to buy the new car for, their value of their trade. They get the credit score. They can uh, they can do their entire deal and then basically come into the dealership for the final delivery. That's that's a, a perfect. Um, hybrid process that if, if you've got, you know, you could set it up that way at your store. I mean, it's, um, I mean, there's plenty of, plenty of ways to do it, but that would be the, the, the most simplified way to do it is have the customers go through the proper process that way. Make your online process very simple, transparent, easy to use. And especially when they walk into the store, everything they saw is, is perfectly transitioned right over there to them. There's been a ton of We've talked about it before in the past. You know, you, you can work your deal when you get to the dealership. The dealership's like, what are you talking about? I have no idea who you are or what you've right. done. And that happens, you know, to this day in 2021. A customer may work their entire deal and then come to the Oh, you froze up on me a little bit there. So we'll go ahead and uh, let you try to get caught back up. Uh, I'll come back over to me as you're... Uh as we're trying to get you back online. So uh, for me to answer that question, uh, what can car dealerships do to advertise to customers that are looking for online? I think what most or many dealerships have tried in the last uh, 30 day or uh, th this last year uh, since COVID is to just grab some sort of digital retailing technology, bolt it onto their process and really expect a button on an SRP or a VDP of start buying process that you're just going to magically have some sort of uh, Amazon type of sales process that goes along with that. And I think the real issues that dealerships are experimenting experiencing is that just by adding a piece of technology or a button on their dealership website isn't changing the way that dealerships are selling cars and dealerships are trying to align their process to that online uh, uh, customer versus trying to figure out how to best um, bring those customers into the existing uh, dealership process. So um, as you said, uh, David, which I think I've lost you completely at this point, is that um, uh, a way to think about how can you advertise to consumers, I would embrace all of the benefits of a traditional process. What makes it such a great experience for customers to purchase a vehicle from your, there he is. I'm going to bring you back on. Bring you back online here, David. Hold on a sec. All right, do I got you back? Do I got you? Yeah, back? Yeah, my, my, uh, my iPhone overheated. Oh, did it really? Wow, interesting. Okay, hold on a sec. Let me see if I, uh, so... Uh, for any of our viewers now, we are working on trying to work through some of this technology. 
uh, to be able to bring in uh, David. Come on now. Yeah. I guess I, I now I'm, at, I'm on as a guest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there we go. Hey. Okay, so a little bit different way of doing it. There we go. Hey, that's a different uh, different angle for me. Okay, so we got this uh, going a little bit differently now. Um, but I got you. I got you back. So that's good. So what I was saying uh, as I was bringing you back is that um, uh, a way to advertise to those customers uh, that are that enjoy an online buying process is not to try to duplicate what Carvana or Vroom is doing and try to be both to customers to be an online retailer and an offline retailer. So you create these two separate channels. What I would recommend is embrace the fact that you got a $30 million facility, that you, um, the benefits of buying from a new car dealership or a physical location outweighs just buying from an online retailer. So really embrace the idea of either or, or somewhere in the middle. You want to start your process online, finish it in the showroom. Start it online, finish it online, you're happy to do that. Start it in the showroom, finish it in the showroom, or anywhere in between. So anyways, that's what uh, my thoughts are uh, for that. Um, and... Um, I think that's it. So we got the Modern Dealer podcast going on. A little bit of technical difficulties that we need to work through. Make sure that we don't have a uh, an overheating iPhone, uh, so we don't lose you next time. But hey, that was we're 36 minutes into uh, the Modern Dealer podcast, and uh, with that, um, uh, do you have any uh, words of wisdom? And actually, let me do this, David. Do you have any Bert's three tips? <laughs> <laughs> well um i okay so i'll give you so let me give you my three tips here so um basically tip number one is uh since uh, we've been demonized in the car business of that experience make sure um make sure your customers are not having this demonized experience in in, in the dealership and if you got any of these um uh, old school practices i mean it's 2021 get on the new school practices um, i would say uh, tip number two is transition properly from uh, you know, from what they've seen online to the showroom. And as I mentioned before, as tip number three, to use a good software, uh, there was a plug there for Entice. And I would have to say that the best software out there you can use to have this smooth transition for customers to start their deal online and finish it up at the dealership and just um, guarantee a short visit at the store for them to pick up their cars. Like, hey, uh, set it up that way that they feel they'll be in and out literally in a, shoot, a few short minutes. Most customers are going to have you in and out less than 30 minutes. So if they feel that way, come walking in there. And of course, if, if you treat them right, you know, 30 minutes we could become another, you know, 45 minutes to an hour because you give them the opportunity to sell some items in, in the box. Or they already were sold because they came in with, uh, with the proper, uh, <laughs> the proper yep. uh, setup from the right software, and the right software would even sold them that um, those F and I products. So really, the customer should just come in, and, and we can be uh, a concierge service for them in the end. Be a concierge. That's my tip. Be a concierge. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Very good. Well, so this has been very exciting. Modern Dealer Podcast Live, uh, moving on to 2021 in a whole new, different way. Our goal with the Modern Dealer Podcast is to be able to bring this to you every Thursday at 3 p.m., uh, anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes, talking about the uh, uh, you know uh, any current topics uh, for the Modern Dealer Podcast uh, audience. Um, I really appreciate your time, David. We're we're going to go ahead and get this wrapped up and uh uh i guess what we just all we have to do now is to say for modern dealer podcast for david and david we're out see ya <laughs>